Hey guys, today I'm gonna be reviewing the Jumper EasyBook 3L Pro laptop. It comes from China, it costs around $200. Starting off with the specs, it has a Celeron N3450 CPU, 6GB of RAM, 64GB of built-in eMMC storage and it also has an M2 slot for storage expansion. One thing with the RAM you should keep in mind is that you cannot upgrade it later, it's built into the motherboard. And it has a 1080p IPS screen that looks pretty good. The body is made out of some kind of a metal, presumably aluminium. That metal though, it gets dirty very easily and also it can be scratched very easily. I already have two scratches on the top of my laptop from a cardboard box I put on it. Another mystery with the chassis is that right next to the touchpad, after a day of use, two lines appeared on each side, presumably from the top of the screen. I tried to rub them off with a wet cloth, but it didn't work and right now it seems like they're on there forever. As I mentioned, the screen is at an ATP IPS panel, it's matte and it's also bright enough for outdoor use. And this is how far the screen tilts. Moving on to the ports, on the right side it has a charging port, 3.5mm headphone jack that has no issues by the way, type A USB 3.0 port and an SD card reader. On the left it has another USB 3.0 and a micro HDMI. The keyboard is something that I described as really good actually and I liked it. The trackpad on the other hand is very stiff and also it's very bad at very precise movements, which is nothing special for a cheap Chinese laptop. There are a bunch of useful function keys for screen brightness, volume and locking the touchpad. This is the keyboard layout. The speakers are also surprisingly loud but they literally have no bass. The mids sound very bright, they stand out the most when you turn up the volume. It came with a Windows 10 license out of the box. Windows 10 on this computer came with one pre-installed utility app. Also, it had found all the drivers. Now, unfortunately, when I reinstalled Windows, it couldn't find all the drivers automatically and I still don't know what the drivers missing are for. Now, time for some tests. On my 100 down and 100 up Wi-Fi network, on the 5 GHz, it managed to almost hit the 100. I'd say the Wi-Fi antenna is pretty good on this laptop. These are the speeds for the built-in eMMC drive. Not the fastest, but the M2 slot on the other hand works without compromises. The charger came with a pretty low quality Chinese charger. Also it uses the USA plug so I'll have to use an adapter. The charges are actually pretty quick. The battery time for me is about 6 hours. I use the computer very intensively most of the time, like FL Studio and programs like Google Chrome. That's it for the review part, now moving on to the internals. You gotta remove all these screws all around it to open the back up. And also, I already opened the M2 slot. It fits the small M2 drives. The back panel comes off. There's nothing connected to it. You just take it off. See, it's, it's pretty thin. And the battery is in this region where you see it. And uh, I guess you have to be careful not to puncture the uh, back with anything so you don't set the battery on fire. But this is how the internals look. The battery is 4,800 milliamp hours. It's lithium polymer. Made in China, of course. So this laptop has a heat spreader here, a copper one, which is really good. That's a plus side. The M2 which you don't have to open the whole back to insert. One bad thing about the M2 drive is that you need a specific really small screwdriver like this to unscrew the unscrew the little shield. Okay, and uh, these are the stereo speakers that are behind the hinge. So, I was correct, they're behind the hinge. And also, it does make a little sound when turned on, this part, which is the main board, maybe you can hear it right now. I'll try to boost the volume up. So yeah, that's not good. Um, you can actually hear it with the back cover on as well. Also, if you get this laptop, tell me if you get this sound or not. You don't have to open it up, just put your ear to this side and listen to it. If you have it, you'll be able to hear it. If you want to add something to improve heating, you could probably use a thermal pad and put it on this um, copper heatsink, but it probably need to be like three millimeters thick. 
And that's it for the review. Thanks for watching and subscribe. You should want to follow me. And maybe also like this video if this helped you.